The circuit construction kit produced by the FET Interactive, Interactive Simulation Collaboration is a very useful tool that you might want to be using as you try to better understand DC circuits combinations of resistors and the like. It may also be useful as you are uh, working on the homework. Be aware you are not allowed to use it on the exam, but uh, it may give you some insights and help you as you try to understand these circuits better. What I would like to do in this video is show you how to lay out a simple circuit, adjust some parameters, and then something that's very important both here and in lab, uh, how you would measure voltages and how you measure currents. So very quickly, let's lay out a simple circuit. I'm going to put down a battery. So I now have the voltage source. I'm going to lay down a light bulb. And just so that I have some control over this, I'm going to put a switch in. I'm going to lay down some wires. And I'm going to put these down sort of nicely. You really don't have to go to quite this much care in laying things out, but it may make it easier to see things. And two last wires. I'm making nice sharp corners. You really could just toss one wire in between these connections. At this point, we have a complete circuit with a battery, a bulb, and a switch. One of the uh, things that's going to happen is when I throw the switch, I close it, and I'm going to light the light bulb. Now at this point I need to make a comment about one of the features here. You notice that we see the flow of charges. It turns out that this is the flow of electrons. So as we work through these simulations, be very careful. This is the electron flow which is being shown. This is not the direction of the conventional current. The direction of the conventional current is the opposite direction. If we want to turn off the electron flow, we can go to the advanced options and we can hide electrons. I'm going to leave them on for the time being, but again, make sure you realize this is the electron flow, which is opposite the direction of the current, the conventional current. Now, if we keep the resistance of the bulb the same, and we increase the voltage on the battery. Actually, let's go over here. We can show values. We see that the bulb is 10 ohms. We see that the battery is at 9 volts. And we see that the switch right now is at 0 ohms. And all of these wires are ideal wires with zero resistance. If I right click on the battery, I can change the voltage and I'm going to increase the voltage to 20 volts. And when I do this, I'll see that the current is much greater. This is visualized by the, by the flow of electrons and that the bulb is glowing much more brightly since there is more current passing through the bulb. Now I can also change the resistance of the bulb itself. And if I change the resistance up to 20, I'll reduce the current. Now that we have this set up, what I'm going to do is open the switch. We want to be able to measure the voltage at different points in the circuit, and we want to be able to measure the current. So what I'm going to do is select voltmeter, and the voltmeter is going to be used to measure the potential difference, the voltage, between two points in the circuit. Whenever you measure voltage, you are measuring voltage between two points. So for example, if I put one lead at the bottom, the negative terminal of the battery, and I put this other lead at the top of the battery, I see that I measure 20 volts. And even when I throw the switch and everything's flowing, we see the 20 volts. I'm going to hide the electrons now. As I move around, I find that everywhere on this top wire is at 20 volts. We have discussed in class already that 
this wire, since it has zero resistance, is an equipotential. It has the same potential at all points until you reach the light bulb. Now, after the light bulb, we're actually at zero volts. We are at the same potential all the way back to the battery because we have no item which has resistance here. So first off, as we measure voltage, we're always measuring voltage between two points. So the voltage increase of 20 volts across the battery, and then we find that there's a voltage decrease of 20 volts across the bulb. Now the other thing that we're interested in is the current. I can click on ammeter, and when I make a measurement with an ammeter, what I need to do is become part of the circuit. So I'm going to remove this wire, and instead I'm going to place in this location an ammeter. I'm going to get rid of a few things here. I'm going to place the ammeter, and it doesn't want to move over. Okay, we'll leave it there. I'll replace the ammeter and it is going to tell me how much current is flowing through the circuit. Right now we've got one amp and that's what we expect since we have 20 volts across a load of 20 ohms so we have one amp of current. Now what we also find is that we can place another ammeter I'm going to open the circuit here, remove this wire, we can place another ammeter back here on the bottom See if it's behaving. I'm going to close the switch. I'm going to get these leads out of the way. And we see that we also have one amp of current down here. Now remember the conventional current is described as leaving the positive terminal, going up through here in the circuit, going through the bulb, and then returning back to the battery in this closed loop. So we have one amp leaving the battery, and since there's nowhere for current to build up, nowhere to current for current to magically come from, we need to make sure that we have one amp flowing back into the battery as well. So at this point, we've now seen how you can create a simple circuit, how you can change values. When measuring voltage, you can use the voltmeter. And when measuring voltages, you want to measure between two different points in the circuit. And it will tell you the voltage difference between those two points. We will often take the negative terminal of the battery to act as a reference in the circuit. And we may use that as roughly our zero potential. And any time you measure current, both in the simulation and in the lab, you need to make the ammeter, the device measuring the current, part of the circuit. The current needs to flow through the ammeter. Never place an ammeter in parallel with part of the circuit. We'll discuss that later. And never place a voltmeter in series with the circuit. This ends our first foray into the uh, circuit construction kit.